প্রিয় দর্শক আসসালাম আলাইকুম কোর ভিশন ফাউন্ডেশনের আয়োজন ভিশন ফর সাকসেস এ স্বাগতম দর্শক জীবনের প্রতিটি ক্ষেত্রে আমরা সবাই চাই সফলতা কিন্তু সফলতার সংজ্ঞা কি এর মাপকা ঠিকই সম্পদ নাম যশ ক্ষমতার নাম কি সফলতা সফলতার জন্য কি অপরিহার্য সফলতার কোনো শর্টকাট পথ আছে কি এইসব প্রশ্নের উত্তর খুঁজতেই কোর ভিশন ফাউন্ডেশনের উদ্যোক্তা উন্নয়ন কার্যক্রম ভিশন ফর সাকসেস আমাদের আজকের আলোচনা টাইম ম্যানেজমেন্ট এ কি টু সাকসেস আসুন জেনে নেই কোরআন ও সুন্নার আলোকে টাইম ম্যানেজমেন্ট কি কেন শুরুতেই পবিত্র কোরআন থেকে তেলাবাদ আওয়ার স্পিকার টুডে ইমাম শামসি আলী স্পিরিচুয়াল লিডার অফ জামাইকা মুসলিম সেন্টার ওয়ান অফ দ্য লার্জেস্ট মুসলিম সেন্টার্স ইন নিউ ইয়র্ক সিটি হি ইজ দ্য ফাউন্ডার অ্যান্ড প্রেসিডেন্ট অফ নুসানতারা ফাউন্ডেশন ইমাম আলী ইজ এ ফ্রিকুয়েন্ট স্পিকার এট দ্য ইউনাইটেড নেশন অ্যান্ড আদার ইন্টারন্যাশনাল ইভেন্টস অ্যান্ড মিডিয়া ইনক্লুডিং সি এন এন ফক্স নিউজ অ্যান্ড বি সি অ্যান্ড আল জাজিরা নিউ ইয়র্ক ম্যাগাজিন হ্যাজ চোজেন ইমাম আলী হ্যাজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য সেভেন মোস্ট ইনফ্লুয়েন্সিয়াল রিলিজিয়াস লিডার ইন নিউ ইয়র্ক সিটি অ্যান্ড জর্জ টাউন ইউনিভার্সিটি হ্যাজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য ফাইভ হান্ড্রেড মোস্ট ইনফ্লুয়েন্সিয়াল মুসলিমস ইন দ্য ওয়ার্ল্ড ইমাম আলী হ্যাজ অথার্ড সেভারেল বুকস অ্যান্ড আর্টিকেলস আসসালামু আলাইকুম ব্রাদার ওয়েলকাম টু ভিশন ফর সাকসেস থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ ফর হ্যাভিং অ্যাগেন সো আওয়ার টুডেস টপিক ইজ টাইম ম্যানেজমেন্ট এ কি টু সাকসেস সো হাউ ইউ আর গোয়িং টু রিলাইট কোরআন হাদিস উইদ ইন উইথ টাইম ম্যানেজমেন্ট অ্যান্ড দিস ইজ এস ইজ এ মডার্ন টপিক উই কনসিডার ইজ এ মডার্ন টপিক অ্যান্ড হাউ ইউ রিলাইট উইথ দিস you know let me first correct you that you know it looks like islam is not modern by the way islam is so modern more modern than any uh, people uh, claim to be modernity you know in fact prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the way he managed the life in the 7th century is too modern uh, and to such extent that some sahaba did not or could not make it uh, the way prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you know envisioned the life at that time the way he built medina for example is very modern um and uh, even the non muslim today acknowledge that that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is too far um beyond the uh, capability of the arab to comprehend uh, in the way they build medina at the time so when you talk about modern uh, managing t- our time our time management of course this terminology is modern modern term but the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his is islam itself is all about time management um let me begin by reminding us that you know in in the western society there is a phrase says that time is money uh time is money so everything is money uh but in islam i would like to change that uh, not only time is money but time is life means that our life basically is just a composed a, com- a composition of time uh every second passes it means our life passes as well and and that's why the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ali radhiallahu anhu basically says that uh al waqtu ka saif this time time is just like sword illam taqta'ahu qata'ak if you don't use it the time use you if you don't cut it off they are go- the time is cutting you off so it means either you use it or you are going to be used by the time uh because it passes all the time and um, there is no op- there is no any anywhere that you say t- my time is stopping no it passes continuously and so it is very important to realize that every single second of our life is a matter of responsibility number one we are going to be responsible we are going to be questioned in the day of judgment what you have done so far uh in the day of judgment there will be some question there will be some question that to be asked by the angels number one is our life in general how did you use you, you use with your, your your life and number two the wealth where did you get it from how did you spend it okay uh and number three our young youth time you know um, because youth is considered the best opportunity of our life 
that is in between child childhood and 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 all uh, elderly, elderly elderly life so it means we are in in the climax of energy uh, opportunities uh, capabilities and and if you don't use that opportunity we are going to be questioned in the day of, of judgment of course knowledge how did we uh, implement it and, and so my point is that uh, time is so crucial important in, in, in the religion because every single act for example every single ritual even rituals in Islam is is based on time in the salat kanat al-mu'minina kitab maquta prayer had been set had been obligated on a set time it means asr the time is asr clear zuhur is clear fajr is clear from what time to what time uh, maghrib for, is clear from what time to what time and then you have isha from what time to what time and and so on and so forth so practicing salat only five times daily prayer is quite sufficient for a muslim to manage their time because we are going to be careful what time is coming what time is going to begin our zuhur again and it constantly reminds us you know it's 12 o'clock one more hour to be for you to be prayed so it means anything that you have to finish in between you have to finish it and, and uh, fasting for example kutiba alaykum siyam and that is in the shah ramadan and it's, and it's related to the time as well and then zakat there is what we call hawl there is once in annually so it's also concerning time and then hajj is fi ayami ma'dudat there is a uh, there is a certain time that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated um, uh, hajj فَمَنْ فَرَضَ عَلَيْهِنَ الْحَجِّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فُسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالِ That Al-Hajj is أَشْهُرُ مَعْلُمَاتِ the, the Hajj is uncertain months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, has said. So the point is that every single act in Islam is being determined by the time. And that itself is a very solid ground for Muslim to say that we cannot just misuse our time. We cannot just miss our time. Because otherwise, we are going to miss a lot of things, not only in, in life, but more importantly, in our own religion, uh, including our salat, our, our fasting, our zakat, our hajj. We are going to be missing them if we are not taking care of, of the time itself. So uh, what, what is the, uh, actually, how we can make the plan of our timing? And how, how do you think that um, Islam teaches us to make the plans? You know, first of all, before doing practical thing. There are, there are philosophical things that need to be taken into consideration. Number one, that time has been given as a responsibility. So we're going to be responsible on every second that passes in our life. How did he utilize it? And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reminded us in one hadith that there are two blessings, two ni'mah, that many people are forgetful careless about it. Number one is as-sihha, and it is about health. The Prophet Muhammad talked about health. You know, sometimes our imams, our maulanas, maulis, you know, they don't care about this. They consider being healthy is a non-Muslim issue. Exercise is a non-Muslim issue. You know, jogging and taking care of our uh, dietary and, and, and food and um, health in, is just a non-Muslim issue. No, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talked this since seventh century that health is an important issue in our life. It is a part of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but many people are careless. And Number, we have to take care of the health also. Of, of course, certainly. Uh, th there is another hadith that says that the best, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves most those who are stronger. And the scholars uh, almost consensusly says that the meaning of strength here, strong, means physical strength. Means you have to be someone who is physically fit, you know, not sick, not weak, you have to take care of yourself, what you eat, what you drink, uh, how you do exercise. It is all very important. And so this is number one. Number two, there is another blessing that many people are careless, and that is al-waqtu, and that is about time. And the Muslims these days are losing every, every kind of opportunities. I used to deliver this speech about opportunity in the 21st century, because we are living in the globalized world. Globalized world means this different situation from what we see, what we saw 50 years ago or 20 years ago, before even. The globalized world had been characterized by many things. But I think there are three things which is more evident, more clear as a sign of global world. Number one is speed. 
it means everything, everything is being speedy, including information. You know, I'm talking here, and someone is just take picture and upload it on Facebook. People from the other part of the world can see me at the same time, that I'm sitting here talking to you. That is the speed of information. Uh, and that is the, the characteristic of the global world. Secondly, that we are being interconnected means that the wall between countries and between people has become minimized. And that's why I'm building cooperation with Jews or Christians, with Hindus, with Buddhists, because I, I see that this wall has become a small house for everybody to live. It's not a time to, to fight. It's the time to work together because we own a small house and we are living all of us in that house. If you don't take care of him, we are going to destroy it together. And that's why it's very important to build partnership uh, between people, ef between everybody, despite of the differences that we have. We have different opinions in terms of faith, in terms of religion, in terms of how you define God, for example. But we are all human beings and we live in the same house. This planet is one house for everybody. And that's why building partnership is very important. But the, one, the, the last one of the characteristics of the, this global world is competition. We are competing with everybody. We are competing with, with non-Muslims, with Christian friends, with Jewish friends, with Hindu friends. And that competition is, is normal. It's normal because competition is always taking place. Now let me talk a little bit about competitions in the concept of the Holy Quran. Uh, we will take a short break. We will come back. All right. and we will we'll stay with you. Dear viewers, stay with us. We are taking a short break. We will come back shortly. Dear viewers, thank you very much for staying with us, uh, here with us, um, Imam Shamsi Ali in our program, Vision for Success. And we are discussing about that. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yes. So I was talking about the concept of competition in Islam. I is it a uh, uh, worldly competition is allowed? or? Yes, of course. But in Islam, when, it, when you give one, the, one terminology, it's always positive. Uh, competition in, in the capitalistic world, of course, sometimes is manipulations, abuse, uh, cheating. But in Islam, when we talk about competition, we are talking about positive ways. Because you cannot, in Islam, you cannot make, you cannot achieve something by making halal of any way. I mean, you cannot just gain everything in any way that you want. The good things must be achieved through a good way. And that's why when you compete, you have to compete in a better way. Then moral ground, as I mentioned in another episode, the moral ground cannot be just be ignored. So when it comes to the competition in Islam, it's about all competitions. For example, we compete to enter into Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاسْتَبِقُوا الْخَيْرَاتِ You have to compete in goodness. It means between Abdullah and Muhammad, between two Muslims, you have to compete. For what? To be the best in salat, to be the best in prayer, to be the best in, in fasting, to be the best in charity, to be the best in business, to be the best in politics. These are competitions, and you have to compete. But moral ground must be preserved in order to enter into Jannah. So competition is mentioned in the Holy Quran. And for that, means for Jannah, those who are competing must compete. So it, we must compete, basically. Uh, and then Allah says, You had to compete, you had to be hurry, you had to be quick into the forgiveness of your Lord and Jannah. So it means competition also. So my point is that when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu says that there are many people are careless about time, that's what the result is. We lose competition. I give you one example that many of our viewers basically know that very closely. Many of us are going to Hajj, right, or going to Umrah. And sometimes when we go to Hajj or Umrah, we like to buy something, gift, for our family back home. Because we consider buying gift in Makkah has more blessings, you know, from Makkah, you know, this is a holy land, as the people say it. And so we feel there is something dear into our heart to buy something from Makkah to bring back home and to give to our family. 
But you know what? We buy even tasbih. There's the, how you call it, the beat to say subhanallah, alhamdulillah, ilallah akbar. Or sajada, the, the, the prayer mat. Yeah. Or sometimes this outfit of the Arab, thawbul arabi, the Arab clothing. We bought all this for our family back home. And you know what? We come home and we say, you know, my friend, uh, uh, my brother, this is a gift from Makkah. And we say to them, open it. What is that? It's very blessed because from Makkah. And all of a sudden, our family open it. They open the tasbih. And this is you know, made in what? They open in the back, made in, not in a Muslim country. It's made in China. Made in China. Sajada is made in China. This Arab clothing is made in China. Why Chinese people are producing this? They don't care about religion. But they know the opportunity. They know about time. They know about competition. That millions of Muslims come to this particular spot, this particular area called Makkah. And they need to buy something from it. Muslims don't envision that. But Chinese people have the vision that if they produce tasbih, the Muslims are going to buy it. Not only they use it in Makkah, but they bring it all over the world. It is made in China. These are among the competition that we lose. We lose. And, and the Muslims are losing, by the way. So we have to identify the opportunities also, how, how, how we can um, utilize better the opportunity. And that's why the meaning of waqt also is mean using every opportunity that we have for good. And of course, again, sometimes when we talk about competition, when we talk about using our opportunity for business, for example, to build businesses, people say again, you know, you are teaching our people to be materialistic. And I yeah, mentioned this. Most of this. the time, um, our... our um, uh, religious scholar they are dis they, they dis discouraged to be materialistic and they discourage of not course we must not be materialistic there is a difference between being materialistic and working hard to gain the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the holy quran says ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha nudiya lis salati min yawm al jum'ah fas'au ila dhikri Allah wa dharul bay' dhalikum khairul lakum in kuntum ta'lamun oh believers if salatul jum'ah is announced that leave anything that make you busy any business, any business, leave it. Go to the dhikrullah, go to the remembrance of Allah, go to the prayer. If this is better for you, if you know it. But then after that, Allah, what Allah says, فَإِذَا قُدِيَةِ الصَّلَاةِ If prayer is done, finish. You accomplish the, you finish the salat. فَانْتَشِرُ فِي الْأَرْضِ Then you have to get out there, to the land. Go to the market and do businesses. So to say that doing business is being materialistic is wrong. Because this is what Allah commanded in the Holy Quran. Materialism is something in mentality. It means your mentality is about material. It's nothing but material. Day on in, nothing but thinking about money. And sometimes you don't have money, but your mind is only money. That is, you are poor, but you are materialistic. So being rich doesn't necessarily be materialistic. You can be rich and not being materialistic. And this, this is, must be clear, because some of our scholars misunderstand it. You saw our brothers who are doing business call, he is so much materialistic. No, he, he's not. He is looking for the risk of Allah that Allah commanded him to do. So it's a part of commands in Islam. So again, coming back to the managing uh, time management, it is a very Islamic thing. If you read the Holy Quran, there is a, there is a surah in the Holy Quran called Surah Wal Asr. And Imam Shafi'i says that if Allah does not reveal down any other Quran but Surah Wal Asr, it is enough for us to follow. If we just follow it straightly, Wal Asri. By the time. Inna al insana la fi khusr. Indeed, human beings are in the state of loss. Illa ladina amanu, except those who believe, wa amilu salihat, and does righteousness, or do righteousness. Wa tawasu bil haq, and enjoin to the, to the truth. Wa tawasu bil sabr, and enjoin to the patience. In other words, the faith, iman, amanu, amal salih, and truth, and patience is all related to al asr, all related to the time. We'll continue. Uh, we'll have a break. I think. Dear viewers, uh, we'll we come back very shortly. Stay with us.
Dear viewers, welcome back. You are watching Vision for Success. Here with us, Imam Shamsiyadi. Yes, brother, you are talking about the Surah. Surah al -Asr. So, every single thing concerning our faith, our religion, is related to the time. And that's why Surah al -Asr basically is the conclusion of all. Well, us represent internal life, and that is faith. Well, us related to our external life, and that is righteousness. What we say, how we say it, what we do, how we do it. Time also, well, us also re relate to our public life, and public life is enjoying good and patience. And so, this surah itself is the representation of how time is so paramount important in the religion. And being ignorant of the time is ignorant of the religion itself. Because time is again not only money, it's not only material, but it is also our life. And disrespecting the time is disrespecting the life in general. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you know, he is the role model, of course, in, in every single aspect of human's life. He managed his life, his, his time so effectively and so efficiently. He woke up in the morning and, of course, directly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then he stayed until some time and prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, came back home, met his family, helped his family. In other words, in his personal and public life, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu had a plan, had a very clear plan in his life. And when you talk about plans in terms of time, man time management, it is also mentioned in the Holy Quran. وَالْتَنْزُرُ نَفْسٌ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ That each person must see what he's going to do in the following day. It means you have to plan about what you're going to do in the, next, in the next hour, in the next day, in the next month. You have to plan it. And sometimes that's what we are, we are lacking. Muslims are doing const, uh, instant. You know, you want to, be, to run for, for a, a, a political office. You just instantly become a candidate without preparation. And that is wrong. And that's why, again, we remind ourselves that we must manage our time properly. Uh, because it's a matter of responsibility. It is not only civic responsibility to be successful in our society, but in order to be successful in and the And Imam after. Shafi, you are talking about that. Imam Shafi was telling that uh, only Surah Asr is... Uh, yeah, if uh, Allah does not reveal any other Surah in the Holy Quran but Surah Al-Asr, it is sufficient for the Muslim. Why? why if we just... Because it is about all time. You know, if the Muslim properly utilize the time in faith, إِلَّا لَذِينَ آمَنُوا How to strengthen our faith, how to express our faith, how to connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when the Muslim uh, effectively practice righteousness, how to help others around, how to gain money so that we can help others, how to build schools, how to build streets, sways, so that people can walk uh, safely. All these are righteousness, then it is sufficient for the Muslim to follow. And then we must enjoin one another for, for truth because shaitan is constantly playing to take us away from the truth. And that's why we have to remind one another. فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ As Allah says in the Holy Quran, you have to remind her because reminder is always beneficial to the believers. When you see your brothers are going out from the, from the right way, then take his hand and bring him back to the right way, not pushing them away from the, from the truth. وَتَوَاصُوا uh, بِالْحَقْ وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ You have to be patient because in order to, be, to have faith, in order to, to be a righteous person, in order to enjoy to, 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 the, to, to the truth, it's not an easy job. It needs patience and perseverance. And that's why Allah says at the end, وَتَوَاصُوا بِالصَّبْرِ You have to be patient in doing that. Looking for money, for example, it's not an easy job. But having money is not an easy job too. Sometimes after having the money, we don't know how to spend it in the right way. We go to Atlantic City, we go to Las Vegas and doing gambling, for example. Of course, that's because we are not patient in having the money. If you are patient in having the money, then we have to control our desire. Oh, I have this money, amount of money. My desire want this, want this money to be used in this way. But my iman says no, it is wrong. So I have to be patient. So what I have to do? Oh, instead of going to that way, I'm going to that way for good. And that's the patience in having the money. So sometimes we are patient in the bad things where something bad happened to us, but we are not enough patient when something good happened to us. And that's why patience is always needed. 
and the Holy Quran says what the be sober. Uh, so patient doesn't does mean that uh, not to react to any, anything. No, patient is always reaction, but reaction positively. When someone come to me wanted to kill me, what is the meaning of patient? It doesn't mean just just be staying and silent and do, don't do anything. If I can smile, I will smile and say, what is wrong with me? I smile to him, and that may change his mentality. His anger will go away. But if it doesn't affect, then I have to run away. You know, the Holy Quran says, Just run away and wait until God say, do something else. If not, then I have to, to, to face him. There's a patient also. Facing, facing here what? Defend yourself. So the Holy Quran says, Fight those who fight you. That's a patient as well. So patience is not weakness. Patience is how to respond in a better way, in a positive way. That's what patience is all about. Thank you very much, Imam Shamsali, uh, to be with us. Uh, what, what is your final um, advice uh, for our viewers? I, I just wanted to say that, you know, look at the Japanese. Look at the Western people in general. The advancement of Western civilization and Eastern Asian cultural, uh, cultural civil and civilization like Japanese and Korean, because they take their time very seriously. If you go to the subway, who are reading the book? Non Muslims are reading books seriously. If you go to Japan, who is, who is reading the book? The Japanese people are reading the book. But go to the Muslim lands. They are in the buses, in the cars. They don't read the book. Even here also. Even here also. So I mean, we are really lacking in utilizing our time, using our time. So use our time because this is, this is the, the ground for us to be successful. Dashok, shafalatar kuna shortcut pot ni. Shafalata juno apurihar jahutse, good time management. Apurihar jahutse, Vision ঠিক করে নেওয়া প্রতিটি সফলতার পেছনে রয়েছে একটি ভিশনারি উদ্যোগ ভিশনারি উদ্যোগত্রয় বদলে দিতে পারেন সমাজ অর্থনীতি ও কর্মসংস্থানে চেহারা হতে পারেন অন্যের জন্য প্রেরণার উৎস বিশ্বনাত্ম বিশ্বাস পরিশ্রম এবং ধারাবাহিক চেষ্টা এনে দিতে পারে সাফল্য আসুন সফলতার জন্য সেভাবেই চেষ্টা করি হতাশার কথা নয় নতুন প্রজন্মকে ভিশনারি উদ্যোক্তা ও পরিশ্রমী হতে এবং ইতিবাচক ভাবতে শেখাই অনুষ্ঠান সম্পর্কে আপনার পরামর্শ মতামত লিখুন ভিশন ফর সাকসেস ইউএসএ অ্যাট জিমেল ডট কম ইনশাল্লাহ আবারও দেখা হবে এই সময় এখানে টাইম টিভিতে আসসালামু আলাইকুম